Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the World Conference on Creative Economy 2021. Please welcome to the stage Her Excellency Audrey Azoulay, Director General of UNESCO. Bonjour à tous. Good morning. Excellency, Mrs. Noura bint Mohamed al kabi Minister of Culture and Youth of the United Arab Emirates. Your Excellency, Madam Vice Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy of the Republic of Indonesia, uh, Madam Minister of Culture of Bahrain, Madam Minister of Culture uh, and, uh, and Creative uh, Industry of uh, Colombia, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it's a real pleasure to be here in Dubai, which with the Expo is uh, the center of the world, to discuss an issue which is very dear to my heart and very dear to the mandate of UNESCO, the creative sector, the creative economy. This January, on the island of Sulawesi, in Indonesia, the world's oldest cave painting was discovered, dating back 45,000 years. This discovery confirms an indisputable truth that creativity has always been the lifeblood of humanity, even in the depths of times. Today, creativity continues to permeate societies as we see so clearly in this expo, just a few hundred meters away. This expo showcases the incredible potential of culture and of the creative industries to connect, to connect people, to connect hearts, to connect minds, and to create the future through human-centered innovation. In the words of the Emirati poet, Afra Attik, the expo shows how art can encourage people to find their voices. And we know as well that creativity culture has the power to heal, to weave together societies that have been ripped apart. We see this in the field uh, through UNESCO's different initiatives. We see it very much in Mosul with our initiative to revive the spirit of Mosul in Iraq to which the United Arab Emirates contributes so much, and which you can also discover at the Expo. I had the pleasure to watch. As we seek to build a more sustainable future. We saw this as well at the, at the Venice Biennale of Architecture where the UAE Pavilion was awarded the Golden Lion for its innovative and ecological project in response to the fundamental question that was asked in Venice, how will we live together? I would add, in peace. But for culture and creativity to support us in building stronger and more peaceful societies, we also need to support the cultural sectors and the creative economy. And this is what brings us together here today for this world conference held at the very good initiative of the UAE and Indonesia. And I'd like to commend, to commend their leadership and assure them of UNESCO's full support as well as mine. And also to congratulate both countries for their national strategies on creative economy. Of course, we've seen and felt the impact of COVID-19 on the cultural sectors, on the artists, they felt it very early and they felt it very strongly. Many venues have closed down. Many creators have lost earnings. According to UNESCO's estimate, the gross added value of the cultural and creative industry shrunk by $750 billion in 2020 and 10 million jobs were lost or fragilized. And yet, 
It is precisely in time of crisis that we need to be able to rely on the power of culture and creativity to fuel resilience. I'm very happy that later today in the program there will be a discussion also on creative cities, how cities can integrate creativity and culture for a better sustainable urban development. And during the crisis, we've been able to count on the dynamism of UNESCO's Creative Cities Network. And I'm very happy that both Abu Dhabi and Jakarta join uh, the network this year. This time uh, of crisis has have also highlighted more than ever the essential role of culture in the cohesion of society to, to bind people together and it's for each one of us a fundamental dimension of our shared humanity. And learning from the crisis, I think we can and we should uh, seize the long-term opportunities offered by the creative economy, which is very often underestimated in terms of impact on sustainable growth, impact on jobs, impact on, um, on the development of societies. And you must also know that it's a, it's a sector which employs more young people than any other field. It's a very important dimension of the creative economy. And this is why we, we argue at UNESCO for culture to be at the heart of the recovery plans uh, uh, linked to the pandemic. And it's not only an issue of cultural policy. It's much wider. It's a question of, so of uh, technology, of education, of uh, financing, of tourism, of sustainable development more generally. And this is why at UNESCO, we are committed to placing culture very high and higher uh, in the international agenda. We did it uh, uh, through the G20 culture ministers meetings in cooperation with Saudi Arabia and with Italy last summer, and we are very happy to continue to do so with Indonesia next year. We need this kind of uh, collective engagement if we are to tackle the structural challenges affecting culture and creativity and to build on the fantastic potential of this sector. I would like to address three issues uh, on, this, uh, on this subject and, and what we could do uh, regarding those issues. The first one is that we need, as in many public policies, better data, better information to better understand the needs which would then lead to better public action. This is why, for instance, we're conducting a, a global study with the Abu Dhabi Department of Culture to assess more in detail and precisely the impact of the pandemic on culture. This report will be released in March next year. We also need data to understand um, the challenges hidden uh, in um, facing by the cultural sector. For instance, the question of gender and creativity, as we still have a gender pay gap or lack of women in executive positions, although it doesn't show in the panel of cultural ministers today. And of course, we need better understanding of the economic impact, the impact on GDP, the impact on, on jobs, because very often people don't realize that it can be a sector much more important than many heavy industries, and they would never guess that those jobs are created by the cultural sector. So we need to put the numbers on the table. The second challenge I'd like to mention is the necessity to better protect creators, artists, because the crisis has also highlighted the vulnerability of the people working in the creative sector. This is why at UNESCO, throughout the pandemic, we've organized a series of debates uh, all over the world, very often online, of course, that we've called the Resilient Debates, uh, and they have identified key avenues for actions, uh, ideas that must now be put into practice. And one of, this, one of the key issues that came repeatedly was the need to better uh, uh, protect uh, the artist status. And that is why we've relaunched um, an initiative in UNESCO to study 
the impact of public policies on artists to accompany governments and cultural actors as they work to create effective regulations in this field. And this is very important because we know that artistic freedom uh, goes hand in hand with professional security, if I can use the word in this sector, but at least the beginning of a status. The third and final challenge I would like to, to mention is, of course, the acceleration of digitization. And it's very important to protect creators in this environment. We know that digitization of culture creates many opportunities, as shown as, uh, by the success of the Theater of Digital Arts in Dubai, and as shown by all the innovations we've seen online uh, regarding the cultural sector during the pandemics. But digital technology also gives rise to challenges that must be addressed, particularly regards distribution and business models. We know that digital platforms now play a decisive role in providing access to creative works and that they claim an ever increasing share of the market, we need to be sure that this environment, creators are able to earn a living from their creations. This means guaranteeing that value is shared fairly, more fairly, between digital platforms and creators through appropriate regulations when need be. And it's also necessary to ensure that digital distribution helps cultural diversity. In other words, we need to be sure that all voices can be heard online and also fairly uh, remunerated. This is a message that UNESCO is sending, for instance, uh, in an innovative partnership with Netflix to support young African filmmakers and to promote their work. So with all this, uh, the things we've learned uh, through the pandemic, with all the mobilizations like we see today here, uh, we are can have uh, an international roadmap to better support creative industries and national strategies for the countries that are engaged in this area. Gathering of data, building capacity and supporting entrepreneurship to make the sector dynamic, providing political orientation and fostering dialogue and international cooperation, and of course, provide financial and technical support for the cultural actors who drive the creative economy. This conference uh, comes, you know, after a very special year for many reasons, also to conclude the International Year of Creative Economy for Sustainable Development. But it's not an end, it's the beginning of a momentum and uh, with the support of, uh, of countries like the UAE, like Indonesia, like Colombia, like Bahrain that are here today, but of many others that join UNESCO in this effort, we can build on this momentum. We will have the opportunity to do so in the G20 in Indonesia next year, and also in the Mondia Cult Conference in Mexico in September 22, uh, and you can count on UNESCO's commitment in this regard. I do not doubt that we can count on yours, and I'm very happy to be here today to really reaffirm UNESCO's commitment in this area. Thank you very much. Merci. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome to the stage Her Excellency Noura bint Mohammed Al Kaabi, UAE Minister of Tourism. Assalamu alaikum. Sabah al khair. Good morning, everyone. And I truly welcome you in such a very special occasion. Your Excellency, Madame Audrey Azale, Director General of UNESCO, thank you for honoring us with such an inspiring keynote and shedding the light in terms of the importance of inclusiveness in the creative industry. Uh, Your Excellency, Sheikh Amel Khalifa, our dear friend, and uh, such a force in the cultural scene, not just in Bahrain, but even beyond. Uh, Your Excellency, Minister of Culture of Colombia, I know you've came from very far away, from beautiful Colombia, and uh, we really appreciate having you here with us, Madam Deputy of Minister of Culture of Indonesia, where thank you for passing the baton back to the UAE, and this is 
as mentioned in the beginning of this um, conference, uh, it started in a gorgeous spot called Bali. Uh, and now we're here welcoming everyone in the UAE Expo Dubai. I am truly immensely proud of this moment. We in the UAE are very excited and honored to be hosting the second edition of the World Conference on Creative Economy after Indonesia. Reiterating our promise to the culture and creative sector and underlining our leadership's commitment to nurture and develop the sector. As we witness of the opening of WCCE today, it feels like we transcend time from this moment to the, to the past and to the future. Nothing has preoccupied our mind in the recent past as the present and the future of the creative economy and how we may enable the UAE to boost a vibrant cultural sphere which also contributes substantially to the local and global economy. Our thoughts on this are not confined to just the UAE, as Madam uh, Audrey mentioned. It's, it's, a, it's just beyond. It's inclusive. Uh, it's different nations. We connect. I mean, today we are physically here at Expo Dubai, but again, we're also virtually connected with other audiences who are watching and care about such a very vibrant and important sector that sometimes, you know, is misunderstood because it's mismeasured. And how can we help in that? How can we take it from being fun, being beautiful, being nice, being emotional, but also supporting the economy, livelihood, and sustainability? Where we recently launched here in the UAE, 10-year national strategy for the cultural and creative industries also marks a shift in our nation's efforts. We celebrated the Jubilee last week, and I think we need to prepare for the next 50 years, and nothing better than to have the sustainability mark and viability to what we're doing in culture and the ecosystem. This comes in line with the WCCE, which in itself is very special as it's held in the sideline of the most important event worldwide, Expo 2020. The conference is also marks the closing event, as Her Excellency mentioned, of the International Year of the Creative Economy for Sustainable Development. We were all impacted by COVID-19, and I think for each one of us, it was a moment of reflection and a moment of trying to understand how to grapple with this challenge. Here in the UAE, we assessed, and everyone assessed as well, we revived and jumped back stronger than ever. We placed the creative economy center stage with our economic mindset. The Ministry of Culture did provide a support for the creative industries with the pandemic relief in two phases. I hope it helped. I hope it kept businesses afloat. But most importantly, it showed that you're never forgotten. Much has changed since the first installment of the WCCE that took place in Indonesia back in 2018, while the inaugural conference set the tone of building a vibrant creative ecosystem and focusing on social cohesion, regulations, marketing, and financing. The UAE iteration will build more profound discourse on these topics and discuss how the best position and harness the creative economy in a post-pandemic world. I mean, we're still in the pandemic, but we, we like to act that we're post-pandemic because we're all here <laughs> physically and enjoying that, but with the masks. Many countries, including ours, proved resilient to minimize, enough to minimize the economic and cultural re uh, repercussions of the pandemic. The technological innovation that placed us in a good stead during these trying months were themselves the result of human creativity. With many countries closing their borders due to the pandemic, traditional industries struggled to keep up with the demands of a globalized economy in order to keep afloat. They began to rethink their business, as mentioned. The culture and creative industries, on the other hand, continued to expand their footprint and reach outward. They opened their heart out of the world transcending borders, cultural and languages barriers. Art and culture became the lifeline of humanity and gave people hope and face of despair. Concerts, shows, exhibitions, museums went live, digitized content, and everyone experienced it with joy. 
This world is a great leveler and showed us that art was not just for the elite. Technology helped the democratization of culture and art on both ends of the spectrum. If not only accelerated the creative process leading to more opportunities for creative, but also enabled it access to large, larger audience. We are now in time where we see young artists trying to prove themselves with the digital sphere. There are discussions that will take place in this conference about the NFT and the future of the NFT, of the future of art in this digital sphere. Discussions of how we can protect artists, discussions of how can we sustain and measure and help build, build a better world. But most importantly, how it is also changing the narrative when it comes to culture and creative industries. As mentioned, we will hear from experts, and I hope that we can harness such an opportunity as we work to build an inclusive and resilient economic framework, we need to ensure the long-term sustainability of the culture and creative sector. The linkage between cultural and creative industries and the UN's sustainable development goals is clear. A thriving cultural economy is also unquestionable guarantee for urban recovery and growth. Let us come together and present a model that supports the enablement of the creative economy where we ourselves are creative and collectively work together in service of our shared humanity, building a bright and a beautiful future. Thank you all very much, and I wish you all an incredible time and a journey at the WCCE. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency Audrey and Your Excellency Noura for officially opening the World Conference on Creative Economy 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, this is now a closed session for the Friends of Creative Economy meeting. We ask remaining guests to join the connection stage where we will have a speech by Her Excellency Sheikh May bint Mohammed Al Khalifa, President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities. Do all the things